Hi everyone, I'm Thomas from the Babylon JS team. Today we're about to start a new video series that will take us into the creation of an augmented reality portal. Let's take a look at what we're going to build together. So we are in augmented reality. We are placing a portal. You see the cool effects we have there. And then as we look behind it, we see the real world. But as if we go through it, then we're going to, we're going to be immersed into a full 3D scene that you know, some of you may uh, recognize. Uh, and, you know, we can stay there in the 3D scene, but if we look back through the portal, we see the real world and behind it, the 3D scene, um, as you can imagine. So that's what we're going to build um, together. Uh, today is the first series, uh, is the first video of this series. Uh, and it's going to be a micro introduction about WebXR. And then in the next um, videos, we'll do the different building blocks together, right? So first building block, will be, for instance, about placing the portal in augmented reality. You see how it was stuck somewhere on the floor? Uh, um, so second step after this will be about creating the visual effects of the, of the portal itself. And then we'll keep going. Uh, how about managing the occlusion? How can we see things and not see other things, depending on which side of the portal we are? And then once we've explored all these unknowns, we know how to do these different pieces, key pieces of the demo, then we'll put them together. And there will be lesson five, I believe, when we'll um, do everything, put everything together in a desktop uh, version. And final final lesson, lesson six, we'll do everything um, in, uh, in WebXR, in, in XR. Um, all right, so let's go uh, right now into the first step, which is a micro introduction into uh, WebXR. WebXR, which is a, you know, a standard today in draft mode, although it, it is used in many applications in production. Some examples of virtual reality are uh, all those metaverse applications on the web where people can meet, like those people from Coca-Cola on a strategy day, for instance. Another use case of augmented reality this time is around e-commerce of tryout. Uh, remember how you can try these objects in your living room. In this case, I'm trying a chair in my living room to see how it fits, the color match, and this type of things. So those are some uh, you know, quick examples for, uh, for XR. It is supported by uh, different browser, Chromium based or Chrome, Edge, you know, Firefox, more recently, Vision OS um, also the VR uh, portion of it, and um, not iOS uh, for now, uh, but um, uh, you know, hopefully it will, it will become supported by, uh, by Safari on, uh, on iOS. Because for the web, that's a beauty, right? You write once and then it's going to run um, everywhere, right? All the devices that support a web XR, so whether it's the Quest, you know, Android phones, for instance, desktop for virtual apps, all of this is the same code you write and there are no frictions. So the user just click on a, on a URL and is going to be immersed uh, or is going to enjoy your, um, your, uh, your experience. WebXR provides a bunch of interfaces for developers to create those applications, right? It's a device um, API, so it can like hide all the differences across all the different devices that um, uh, implement Web, uh, WebXR. And there are also different modules that provide different features you can, um, you can use in your application, and those depend on the, the device you're on. If you want to go a little bit deep, you can take a look at the Standard itself, it is managed by the uh, W3C, uh, and you can learn, you know, about the div, uh, you know, more details about the XR device. You can learn about the XR session, which is a pretty important one. If you're curious, some features such as, such as uh, XR layers. I mentioned the um, support of different browsers, so there is a dedicated page on this working group, the Immersive Web working group that manage the, um, the standardization. And they have a cool list of the different features, different modules, and they are support by the different browsers. So this you know, keeps evolving all the time. Just um, you know, I can update there uh, if, you, if, you, uh, if you see things have changed also. All right, quick introduction. You don't have to do this, right? I mean, understanding what device uh, can, can see, yes, yeah, so you have to do this. But going deep into the, um, the, the standard, you don't really need to. What's important if you're going to build a, a Babylon.js WebXR application uh, is to go to our documentation, go through it, because we basically did an implementation. So we made it uh, much easier when you write your Babylon application to 
add WebXR um, uh, components to it, right? Um, so first, if it's a VR if it's a VR application, there is a bunch of um, features you can use right out of the box. You know, like teleportation when you move in VR you are teleported, so you click on a point and boom, you're there instantaneously. There might be some problems if you would, if you would be moving because your sense don't really understand what's happening and are confused. That's why we avoid motion, chic, motion, motion sickness by teleporting ourselves. You can also see your hands, right? In virtual reality, I'm sure you've seen those, um, those um, 3D hands, so this is supported and many more features. Um, those are uh, more for uh, virtual reality. And there are also a bunch of augmented reality uh, features that work, you know, when we're in both world. And um, so when we're showing 3D into the real world, uh, an important one, uh, for instance, is the heat test, which we're going to use and see more in detail today. The heat test is about sending a ray. Uh, imagine sending a ray to the real light and getting the information of when this ray hits the floor, right? So we, we know the, the coordinates basically on this point. Uh, which can be very useful to place something, right? Remember, we're going to have to place this portal somewhere. Uh, yeah, and many, many more features. Uh, so you can check there on the documentation, Babylon.js, WebXR. Uh, you get all the detail. Today, finally, let's see some code. Um, that's the first playground, uh, Babylon.js playground uh, building. We're going to see today where you create a mini WebXR uh, application or you know mini demo. Let's look at uh, first what it is, right? So it's going to make it real. So first, I have a page here, a web page. You saw really quick, a page. And then I, with my finger, I just click on um, the little headset on the bottom, right? And then I'm getting into immersive mode. I'm in uh, augmented reality. You see a little torus here on the floor that is really following the floor, right? So we got something that gives us the position that it goes through wall, but it stays on the floor, right? So that's what we're going to understand how to build today. So and it's just this, um, this few lines of code. So the first part here is what you have in any playground in any Babylon scene. Uh, so we're you know, creating the, actually the scene object. The camera also, which is the view we see, um, some light uh, and the light intensity. So this is like in almost every uh, every playground. Then the XR part is just the following um, the following lines. The first set is something that is very important, which is the um, default XR experience async. And I should have said right before is. Uh, show you this WebXR experience helper. Because in our implementation of WebXR, like I was saying, it, we try to make it very easy. So we have a helper that is doing everything for you. It is going to, as you create this object, uh, it is going to create the session, create the XR camera, uh, configure everything. So just one line of code, this line, and you get and you, you, you get everything set up already. It is also building the page that I was um, showing, the HTML page I was showing, where you can, uh, where the user can just click uh, on the little, um, kind of like uh, uh, Googles at the, at the bottom um, to be immersed into, uh, into AR or VR. All this is out of the box. Uh, you just have to say, uh, as an example of parameter, if you want AR or VR, in our case, we want augmented uh, reality. So that's the first big piece uh, that does a lot under the hood. Second part is the feature manager. Remember, I uh, mentioned a few features that are available, a bunch of features actually that are available in WebXR. Well, you don't have to load them all, right? So you're going to call the feature manager so you can load the one you really want and need. The one we're going to need in this experience is the hit test. Remember, I was explaining the hit test, the array that gives us the coordinates of the intersection of the floor uh, and a you know light, a light of array of lights. Uh, well, um, we're loading it here, and we are. Uh, we can pause a minute. We are uh, uh, asking for the latest version because WebXR is currently in draft. Um, versions uh, versioning is a way for us to keep backward compatibility. So if your application, you want to make sure this code doesn't change, you can look at the right number of this feature and you put here the number and then you get, um, you'll get always the same code and backward compatibility. If you want to get the latest, as you know, I put here, you just put latest and you get whatever latest version of this uh, feature is, uh, is available. So we're into AR, we got our feature, uh, hit test feature, let's keep going. Remember, there was a little torus on the floor. So that's what we're doing in those three lines here. 
We're creating a torus, uh, you know, saying its size and diameter and, and thickness. We're making sure it is invisible uh, at the beginning, uh, right? Because I don't know if you remember, but at the beginning it was not visible. Uh, and then uh, this, this is just to say that we're going to manage its rotation using our quaternions. Uh, and then really what happened in the next set of lines is the magic of, um, of WebXR. Uh, because here, what we're doing is we have an, uh, an observable. So think of, think of an event system. We're uh, watching uh, an event to happen. And the event here is whenever the hit test uh, returns a result. So whenever the API detects the floor, it's going to send us a result, right? And then, so if we have this result, uh, I'm going to make my marker visible and uh, I'm going to get the results. And uh, I'm going to put the marker at the position of the hit test with the right rotation and scale. So this is really the magic of WebXR because we didn't code anything to recognize where the floor is, right? It is not in our code. It is not in the Babylon um, JS implementation of WebXR. It is really, it's not even WebXR, it, it is really calling the native API on whatever device it is implemented, right? And that's the beauty of WebXR. And then natively, so in a very optimized way, every frame is being analyzed and um, the floor is being detected and the position is being returned, right? So it's very fast, but yet it is available across device. So that's the beauty of uh, WebXR. And we're going to see many more uh, things in the, in, the coming, uh, in the coming lessons because we're right now at the end of our lesson uh, today. It was just a micro introduction. Next video, we'll go deep. We'll start deep into the real code of the demo. We'll start on placing, loading, and placing an object at this position. And also, we'll learn how to debug. Because in WebXR, debugging can be painful because of those round trip between the place where you are coding on the desktop and the place you're testing on the, on the on mobile device. So we'll see about this. But that's for next time. You can uh, check in the description. You'll see the different links I mentioned today. And hopefully, I'll see you next week or next time for the next uh, video. See you in uh, video number two. Bye-bye, all.